I realized how many of the core self-development tools are already within Islam. And that's what kind of motivated me to start this project in a sense, because you find a lot of the tools are already within Islam and even better. So it's like even the little things like affirmations, right? We have, <coughs> excuse me, we have azkar, right? Which is essentially, if you understand the meaning, it's like the ultimate affirmation. If you just say it with, without thinking, like, oh, I need to do my subhanallah wa bihamdihi a hundred times, and you're just doing it mindlessly, then obviously you still get the deed of saying it and the reward of uh, saying the words. But if you were to internalize it and you're like saying alhamdulillah with the meaning and trying to visualize something that you're grateful for, you've got the tools within Islam. And this is what I always like try and put across through the project, even like with Alhamdulillah, it's like encompasses gratitude, which is like such a big area. And now there's more studies behind why it's such like a beneficial right. thing. And then you've also got like a visualization. I shared a, a video on this because I found it in Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's book on pur purification of the heart. He mentions visualization in one of the, one of the lessons about having high hopes and he mentions how sports people visualize and he mentions stories of certain like pious predecessors who actually used to lie down in coffins, right? And he mentions how they used to have this practice of lying down in coffins to visualize death and the akhirah. And that, see, that's what I mean when I say like the confluence between self-development and like the common self-development ideas and how they can, and they've always existed. But Muslims, we need to rediscover that history and that beautiful practice. Yeah. And then also you've got things like, obviously, the blessings of the morning, basically any self-development tool out there, essentially. And then Stoicism, you mentioned another like favorite topic of mine. As I was reading those books, I even emailed Ryan Holiday once and he replied and he was like, I look into it. And then in his next book, instead of talking about Islam, he mentioned something about Sufism, which I hate when they do that because these people in the West, when they do want to give credit to Islam in some way, they try and stay safe or like they try and stay woke by only mentioning Sufism when essentially it's Islam, isn't it? So like in his Stillness is the key book, he has a bit on Sufi practices. That was interesting because we've got the famous Hadith that if you were to give someone one Hadith about self-development, it'd be that one or in terms of like Stoicism or having a, a good mindset, which is the one about all the affairs of the believer are good because if something ostensibly good happens, it's good and it's fair. If something bad happens, he's patient and he gets rewarded for it. So it's like a win-win situation, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like the advanced level of stoicism because in stoicism, unfortunately, how it's taught now is without the dimension of God, without the dimension of the next life. So they have to apply it, but limit it to this world so how they'd use it is okay if something good happened it's good if something bad happens it's good because you've learned something right that's how they phrase it or you've you've gone through some kind of pain alhamdulillah we as muslims we have the additional benefit of the akhirah as in something bad's happened you go through the pain but guess what you're getting rewarded for it in this world like you're building the deeds and it's going to help you in the akhirah and then there's like quotes by i came across some like ibn Taymiyyah and other scholars, Ibn Jozi is another favorite um, because he has a book where, I forgot what it's called, but he has a book where it's more of his reflections and it's a rare insight that you don't normally get from scholars of the past because most of it's tailored towards putting out a message or like teaching something, whereas this was his own kind of cognition and his own thoughts and it's really revealing. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he has a quote where he, he goes through the various options of what his enemies can do to him. And he's, they can put me in jail, which is good because I'll have time to pray more and engage in solitary ibadah and get the benefits of solitude. Then he's, they can exile me. And that's good because it's tourism, <laughs> something like this. And it's like that same mentality that when I was reading, I was just like, mashallah. Okay. And yeah, and I want to take it back to you. If you've got any, anything to add to what I've yeah, said. All, all wonderful points, you know, and again, once we learn more about the theme, I understand that you mentioned there's some big imams who contribute a lot to the field of psychology, whether mainstream psychology knows it or not. I'm currently writing a paper which is to address that and I will send it over, inshallah. I'm actually due to send it by Tuesday, <laughs> believe it or not. No, no, Wednesday, Wednesday. I'm due to send it by Wednesday. 
talking about the influence, you know, that Islamic imams and early psychology practitioners had on the field of psychology, because a lot of cognitive behavior therapy and stoicism can be attributed back to major Islamic figures, but also it's all there in Quran and Sunnah. It's all that, you know, in the, in Quran, when it says like something along the lines of, sorry, if I'm misquoting the ayah, but it's, you know, Allah will not place more upon a believer's shoulders than he can bear something along those lines. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. wonderful way for a believer to accept the trial that they're facing, because if they believe in the Quran, the Quran has told you that Allah is not going to give you more than you can handle. So you can handle it. You can handle it. That is, a, you know, that's, if we're talking in psychology terms, in rationally emotive behavior therapy. We call that high frustration tolerance. I can handle it. I can tolerate what I'm going through. Well, it's in the Quran there. Allah's told you you can handle it because, because it's guaranteed you that, you know? So a lot of the answers are already there in the, in the Quran. So no, we just need to look and pay more attention when you mention about they're like doing tasbih and azkar and stuff like that. And people talk about mindfulness now. Well, well what's that? That's paying mindful attention. That's having a clear niyat at the present moment on what we're doing mindfully. Obviously, without the Buddhist and Hindu narratives, we have an Islamic alternative. And this is what, this is the kind of thing that I think that when we kind of get more involved in it, it will just increase our faith and our iman because the answers are already there.